Hi everyone, this is Girish and in this video we will be creating Amazon Lambda function using a Docker image. Why do we want to do that? Normally we create Lambda function by writing our code, create all the dependencies or, or download all the dependency and put them in a zip folder, upload it to S3 or upload directly to Lambda and run the function. But there are some limitations with that approach. One major limitation is the code plus layer plus dependencies cannot exceed 250 MB. When you work with AI or data analytics applications, you use packages like Pandas, NumPy, LangChain, Scikit-Learn, etc. And together they exceed this limit all the time. So you cannot really use them in the serverless lambdas. The Docker image size could be up to 10 gigabyte, which is large enough to package a lot of dependencies. If you have custom runtimes, which is not supported by Lambda, you can always use or create Docker image for the custom runtime and use them to create your Lambda functions. As I said, it's very useful for building data analytics slash generative AI apps, which is very popular these days. And you can use libraries like Pandas, OpenAI, LangChain, PyPDF, NumPy, etc., without any problem, as long as it stays within this 10 gigabyte limit. I'll be creating a lot of more videos using serverless plus generative AI apps using Amazon Bedrock and LangChain, etc. So yeah, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and press that bell icon so you get notified when I press when I put that new video. I have actually one more advantage that we get out of uh, running lam containers on Lambda. I actually take take this diagram for took this diagram from this particular source, where uh, he discusses what are the various advantages, and he actually ran several tests. So let me just quickly take you to his website, and I'll put this link in the description also. And uh, so AWS made significant improvement in the cold start performance for the image up to 15 times. This is at the beginning of this year. But what happens is this, when he ran several performance tests, and if you scroll down here, which is the diagram which I was showing, what happens is if your package size is, let's say, around 300 or 250 MB, the zip cold start is actually more than Lambda co uh, than the container cold start. Why is that? Over the period of time, why is that? My theory is, and when you deploy or create a Docker image, it actually creates various layers. Now each layer, if you don't modify, stays the same or the MD5 of that stays the same. So when Lambda starts pulling your container image from your ECR repository, it, it creates or it pulls all those, all those layers. And if it hasn't changed, I think it caches it. So once it starts caching them, it doesn't have to re-pull them. Hence, the cold start time goes down. Whereas in case of zip, it has to always pull the entire 250 MB or 200 MB of the uh, file size to your uh, Lambda execution environment. So that could be one of the uh, reason. But yeah, this is a very interesting read and uh, take a look and hopefully there are still some new um, learning that you can obviously have. I read this and I was intrigued and that's why one of the reasons I'm also creating this video, but I think it was worth mentioning uh, this particular blog post on how it can be very, very helpful in improving the performance also. So what will we do? We will actually try to see the problem firsthand. We will create a Lambda with a package size which exceeds 50 MB zipped as well as 250 MB unzipped. We'll see the problem that we were not able to create Lambda. Then we will start our Docker rise approach where we'll create a Docker image, upload it to ECR repo, create a Lambda function with correct IAM rule. For this video, we will just use the basic IAM rule. But if you need to access like Bedrock, you have to give Lambda the permission. If you have to access EC3 or sorry, uh, EC, uh, S3 or some other services, DynamoDB, you have to give Lambda the permission that we can apply using IAM role, which will be coming in uh, upcoming videos. Choose the image while you're creating the function and test the function. So let's get started with our tutorial. So 
So here I am in my Visual Studio Code. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the better. I am in here, there are no files. And then what we'll do, we'll start creating some uh, packages as well as the Python files. So I'm going to create a Lambda function and I'll just use, let's just see here. Let's call it Lambda function. py and this code basically imports a few packages like pandas langchain community etc and then it's a very simple uh, demonstration that uh, it creates a panda data frame and just spits out as a json document so very simple illustration and uh, just to show that whatever we package is actually available in the lambda so let's do one thing. Let's get our requirements file. I'm going to copy some of the requirements that we need for this demonstration. So what we'll do, we will install a bunch of packages like PyPDF, Langchain, Pandas, NumPy, Boto3, etc. so that the package size exceeds the Lambda limitation. So let's install this and then what we will do is we'll start with installing this in the package folder. It can be any name. I just want to keep it in the package folder just in case so that it stays separated from my Lambda code. While it's installing, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'm going to create a lot of generative AI videos. I have already created some. Please check my channel for that section. And uh, hopefully it will be helpful. Okay, so my package folder should be created at this point. Let's see. Yeah, I have lots of dependencies. Let's check the size real quick. And we can use du.sh package. And as you can see, my expanded version or expanded directory size is 310m. So what we'll do, we'll actually create a zip file for this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to package folder and then I'm going to zip everything up and put it one level or one directory up. Okay, let's go to one level up and see the path. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my Lambda file also to the same uh, zip file that I just created. So Lambda file is created. Now let's check the size of this. Uh, so this is about 87M. So let's do this. Let's try to create a Lambda function using this file, which would fail obviously since it's all bigger than 50 MB. But let's try, try to do that. So I'm going to go to my Lambda function con in the console, create a function, author from scratch, and let's say test mm, big Lambda. It could be any name and choose the runtime runtime with python 3.12 and i create the function so function is created so what i'm going to do i am going to upload my zip file from the local box so what i'm going to do is upload this file and this is the file that i just created and I'm going to open it. And immediately I get an error that the file size is too large, maximum size is 50 MB. So what I did, I actually uploaded this file a couple of days ago in an S3 location. So let me just show you real quick and we'll try to use the S3 location uh, to try to create this Lambda because uploading will take some time. If I go to S3 
And if I just search for my... So this is the same deployment package 87.4 MB I uploaded here. So what we'll do, we'll try to create this Lambda from this S3 URL. So again, I go from, instead of zip file upload, I'll just give the S3 location and see what happens. Okay, so as expected, the zipped, unzipped size must be smaller than 250 MB and this is what it converts to bytes and we cannot create this function using the zipped archive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this function and then we will create our function using the container image. So to use a container image, we need a hosting. Where do we store? We will create a repository elastic container registry and we will use this registry or repository to host our docker image. So I'm going to create with a name, doesn't really matter and what name it is, but uh, I'm going to create, leave everything as default and create the repository. So the repository is created and if I go in here, we will need these commands, so I'll keep them handy. This is to log into AWS and the Docker and uh, create the Docker image, tag it and push it. So let's do that. So I'll go back to my Visual Studio code and let's just see this. I don't need the package as well as I do not need the zip file. So I'm going to remo remove those. So all I'm left with is lambda function and requirements.txt. So to create Docker image, I need a Docker file. So let's just create the Docker file. So this is a Docker file and to run Docker image or run lambda function using a Docker image, you need to use AWS's provided Docker files or Docker base image rather. So what we'll do, we'll use it from this image or create our image from this base image, copy the requirements file and this is a lambda environment variable. I'll show you where I got all this. Run the pip install, copy the lambda function and that's the startup command to the container which is basically running the lambda function and the handler and lambda function and the handler is the name of the file and the handler is the function name so let's do this uh, we will create uh, our let's just log into ecr first then we'll create this and push it and while it's pushing it i'll show you where i got all these code from so let's log in first Login succeeded. Let's build the image. And this may take time if you have not already downloaded dependencies before, but mine should be pretty fast as I have done it before, but let's see, it's still downloading some. So while it's building it, let me just show you where I got this. If you go to this particular page where deploy Python functions with container images, if you scroll down, this is the AWS based images that you need to use for Python. And uh, this is just the code, but somewhere down here, you see that how to create this example Docker file. So you're using this base image and copying whatever we need to copy to this particular root, which is a Lambda defined environment variable. And then copy your Lambda function as well as uh, what is the startup command, which is running the Python functions uh, from this file and the function name. So let's see if it's still going through, yeah, it's still going. So oh yeah, it has to download everything because I actually restarted my Docker engine and removed all my previous images so it will take a few seconds and then we will continue okay so as we can see this has finished so let's do the tagging we'll go back to ecr and we'll create a tag 
Once the tag is created, we'll push it to ACR. And this will again take some time, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's ready. Okay, it's about to be done, so I just unpause the video and uh, let's see when it finishes. Okay, so this is finished, it's pushed, so we should go back to our ECR repo and we should be able to see this image right here. Okay, so this is the latest image. Let's copy this URI and we will need this to create the lambda function. So go back to lambda function, create the function and let's call it lambda with docker image. We'll choose the runtime as, sorry, we will have to make sure to use this container image as uh, the option. So let's do it again. Lambda with docker image. This is the ECR, uh, the link uh, or the URI to the image. And we'll keep rest of the things uh, same as default. So the function is created. What we'll do before we test this function, we will increase the timeout because it will take more than three seconds for sure to download this at least the first for the first time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to edit this and increase this to let's say 30 seconds. Okay, it's currently uh, getting ready. So, okay, now it's created, try to save it again. Okay, so now it should be fine. What we'll do, we'll go to test tab, create a sample test event, test one, and let's do this, save it, and we can run a test. So as you can see, the function execution is in progress, and it's been almost seven seconds, eight seconds, because downloading that uh, container image for the first time, and as I said, as uh, you read on that blog post also, over the period of time, it in improves the efficiency and the speed because it starts caching some of the layers. Okay, so it took took a while, uh, and it, as you can see, our init duration was almost 14 seconds in this case, whereas the actual, uh, well, actually, the init duration and the build duration was a little bit over. So as you can see, the difference is the function executed within one second, but the init duration was pretty long. But the thing to see is, it's actually printing out my response that uh, we created the Panda data frame and converted it into JSON. So this is what it's printing out. So let's try to run it one more time and see if it improves on the actual response. So I'm going to test it again and it should not take this long. Oh yeah, so as you can see, now it's, uh, not doing any init durations or downloading the image, etc. So now it took only 2.55 milliseconds. And this is what we expect. So as you can see, my image size was nearly 300 or so MB. Let's just go back and see real quick. If I go here, 301 MB. And I was still able to use this image size or this size of uh, image as well as the dependency, etc. to create this Lambda function, which was not possible with the zipped way of creating this lambda function. That's all for this demo. Don't uh, forget to delete the function, although it, and then I'm also going to delete my uh, registry, repository, sorry, so, so that we don't get uh, unnecessary charges. And uh, yeah, so we were able to execute all the steps that we um, identified. So again, that was it for this demo. And uh, please do share, subscribe, and like this video for more videos like this. And press, please uh, press that bell icon so you get notified when I post more videos. I am planning to make more generative AI videos, more Docker and the ECR and Kubernetes videos in future. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time.